All right, so I'm going to be breaking down my entire three-year NoFap journey and hopefully share some of the juiciest details of my journey and, you know, the many L's that I took, the many relapses that occurred, and the many down-bad moments that you will face during a NoFap journey. Now, it is my goal that you will relate to some of the stories that I share and actually get inspired by my story because this whole video is going to be a story. I'm literally going to talk about everything that happened in my life, essentially, during these last three years of me being on NoFap. So with that said, let's get right into it. And we're going to go all the way back to March of 2020, where everything started. At this point in my life, I am a heavy hub addict. I'm talking every single day. Like, I will not miss a single day of, <clears throat> it, was, it was daily. And somehow, I'm seeing a girl at this time. But this was back when I was a little bit of a bitch. And I had no idea kind of how to escalate like physically more than just like making out with the girl because I didn't have the confidence. A lot of my experience had been drunk hookups or with a girl that I had been with for a lot longer so I was more comfortable with her but this girl I had only been seeing for a little bit. I wasn't fully comfortable with her. At the same time, I was watching porn every single day. So <laughs> that did not help at all, all right? And it actually ruined my sex life completely because I found myself Every time I was trying to get intimate with this girl, my dick was not working. It's like there was almost no blood flow. It was like literally a little ch little softy. Straight up just soft, like nothing. And so then I'm overthinking while trying to, you know, do it. It's a horrible, horrible experience for any man to go through. I've told this story before, so maybe you've heard it, but bro, it's traumatizing. You know, at that point, I'm 20 years old. I'm 20, and I can't even have sex with a girl because I have ED. So I'm thinking, what the fuck? Like, it was like almost like, am I even a man? I'm like questioning whether I'm even a man or not because I couldn't do it. I couldn't do what the one thing that most men, that all men, should be able to do and obviously want to do. So it was humiliating, and I kept going back for more. Surprisingly, this girl wasn't like completely like thrown off by it. She was a little bit, but she kept, she wanted it badly. She really liked me for some reason. And you know, we were weed buddies. So we'd smoke weed together, which also didn't help because now I'm overthinking while trying to do this. So my frame of mind was just not in the right place, but a hundred percent, the reason why I had ED was because of the hub. And so after maybe like the fourth time it happened where it's like, Oh, you're not going to have sex with me. Well, that's awkward. Like, is her just like looking at my little limp pee-pee? <laughs> like, uh, I can laugh about it now because it's been three years. Well, yeah, three and a half years. <sighs> After like the fourth time, she ghosts me, essentially. She stops talking to me and I'm like, fuck. I was all depressed because it's like the third girl that's friend zoned me. And obviously, you know, having ED did not help. So I decided to do some research, right? I'm digging and digging on Google, like what the hell is wrong with me? I literally remember searching up, like why can't I get hard? Like something like that. And I stumble across this website called yourbrainonporn.com. And they talk about porn induced ED. And I'm thinking, yo, like it immediately hit me like, damn, that is what I have. Up until this point in my life, I never realized that porn was a problem. I thought it was normal. I thought it was normal to, before hanging out with a girl, beat one off real quick, get a quick little, uh, while watching the hub. So that way you could last longer with the girl. That doesn't work like that, by the way, bro. Like that's the stupidest fucking advice. I thought that was normal. But all it did was ruin my sex life because I was more attracted to what I was seeing in the digital world than I was, that was right in front of me. Like obviously I was attracted to the girl. I would have done it had I not been so addicted to the hub. You know what I mean? So anyway, yourbrainonporn.com, this website immediately spoke to me. And the main idea was like, you need to reboot from porn. That's the term they use, it's called reboot. So instead of like, oh, no fap, no, it was called reboot where you avoid the hub for a certain amount of time or just forever so that you can repair your brain so that you can repair your pee pee and move on with your life, live a healthier, happier life. And so I immediately am like, okay, boom, it's time for me to reboot. So I start literally that night. I say, I am no longer going to watch the hub. I'm no longer going to do it. Never, ever. I'm done. I wanted my dick to work again. So for the next two months of knowing about rebooting, 
I fail miserably. I don't even go more than three days. I keep relapsing, keep relapsing. And it was devastating for me because I knew I was never gonna cure my dick if I keep watching The Hub. The fact that I couldn't do it was just like mortifying to me. I'm like, dude, Matt, what are you doing? And at this point it was like, I was sad because the girl left me. So I was experiencing a whole lot of emotions where I didn't know what to do with my life. I had just flunked out of college, by the way. So in May of 2020, it had been two months since I learned about rebooting and since I had had the whole ED incident. In May of 2020, I flunked out of school and I lost my scholarship. So I was just in a down bad place. But by some miracle, and to this day, I am still so damn grateful for what happened. I was watching YouTube and at this point in my life, I didn't really watch too much YouTube other than a YouTuber called Chris Smoove. I don't know if you know him, but he's like a video game YouTuber. He plays a lot of sports video games. So I was watching his NBA 2K series because that's back when I was playing NBA 2K all the time. And so I'm watching Chris Smoove and all of a sudden on the right side of my screen, I get recommended a semen retention video. And I look at it in, in confusion. I'm like, semen retention? What the heck is that? And it was a video by this YouTuber called HTO. He's not even around anymore. I don't even think you can find his channel, but he was one of the OGs who was talking about semen retention. And I click on this video. It's this like bald black dude and he's firing me up, right? He's like, he has so much fucking energy and he's like hyping up semen retention. I'm like learning all about it. Like, hmm, that's interesting. That's very interesting. I think that's also what I need. I think I do need that. And it brought me back to the whole rebooting thing where it's like, damn, I need to stop doing this shit. Next thing you know, I'm getting recommended more and more and more nofap and semen retention videos. So I'm, I'm watching Jordan Green, I'm watching Ice Cold JT, Von Tu Cut, uh, Casey Zander back when he used to talk about semen retention. And I was binge watching these videos because it helped. It made me realize, fuck me, I'm not alone. <laughs> made me realize that there are other dudes out there who are struggling with this and who are actually who are actually speaking about it and sharing their story of how it helped and saved their life. And ironically enough, I'm now doing the same thing three and a half years later, which is pretty cool. But yeah, man, I am so grateful for finding these videos. So grateful. Those dudes saved my life. Just from hearing their words, just from hearing them speak about porn addictions, no fap, semen retention, just from hearing all that shit. And so watching these videos gave me hope in my life that everything was gonna work out as long as I just get on my shit. So I go about a week on no fap and I start to experience some of these benefits, right? Oh my God, I'm feeling more energy. Oh my man, I'm like, my mental clarity is back. I, I applied for a job at FedEx and I got the job the same fucking day. They, they called me that same day and said, yeah, come on in for orientation tomorrow. So I literally go, this is back during COVID when, you know, jobs needed help. I mean, they still do, but like everyone, everyone was hiring. So it was so easy to get a job. And so the next day I started FedEx, working the night shift. So it was like, I would go in at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. some days and work all the way to like 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. It was like that almost graveyard shift, but like a little later. Now it's like, damn, I really need to stay on my shift because I have to wake up at three in the morning two in the morning, but I'm feeling that no fap energy for the first time in my life. I'm starting to feel like, man, this is, this is good. I'm, I'm rebooting, I'm rewiring my brain. And right away while working this job, like the first few days, I already noticed less social anxiety because of being away from porn for about a week at that point. Felt like talking to people was so much easier and it was beautiful to experience because for the longest time in my life, I was socially anxious no matter where I was, always overthinking. So I finally was starting to just like live in my body more, get out of my head. So I go probably another month on NoFap without any relapses at all. And now we're in June of 2020. And this is when I started working out consistently. So I'm hitting my body weight workouts right here in this room. I'm doing that every single day and like transmuting my energy, just feeling amazing. But there was one problem in my life still. And it was weed. I was still addicted to weed. I was smoking it every single day. As soon as I got out of work, Oh yeah, I was, I had a bong in my car and I'd fucking spark that shit up right after I got out of work. It was like, a, it was a problem. And when you're high, you may have experienced this, but it is so hard to control those urges. It's so hard to have any self-control as well. Your mind's not the same. You're literally altering your mind. And so one day in June, I end up relapsing because I was stoned. I mean, 
we can blame it on the weed, but yeah, we'll blame it on the weed. It's because I was high. Okay, so I end up going back to the hub and I release. I felt so guilty. I felt like, what the fuck? Why am I doing that? I had experienced for the last month no more social anxiety. I had experienced more confidence. I had experienced more energy, mental clarity, all of it. I felt like my life was trending upwards. And then I fuck up. I relapse. Just one little relapse isn't going to hurt. So I kept going. And this is actually the beginning of a very, very long semen retention streak. But there were some hiccups along the way that we'll get to. <laughs> I literally remember it was, I think it was like June 8th. June 8th is when I started this very long streak. And so, you know, it was one of those moments where it's like, all right, Matt, it is time to get serious. Why did I just relapse? Because now it's like, oh, I reset my progress, even though that's what I was thinking back then. But even though we know this now that a relapse doesn't fucking reset your progress, like progress is not linear. Like I was saying, there's ups and downs. Okay. And so that was just a down moment. But anyway, it was me thinking to myself, all right, let's get serious. I need to cure myself. I need to cure my ED. That was like the main focus and the main reason why I was on it. But after like experiencing the benefits, it switched to, all right, damn, no, I just want to live a happier, healthier life, a more energized life. Less of like that, that dude who's walking around with his shoulders slumped, who can't talk to girls. I wanted to be the confident guy and NoFap was helping me get there. Fast forward a month. I'm back on a, I'm back on a month long streak. I'm feeling good again. Everything's going great. And it's time to move out my friend all the way across the country in Oregon. And I'm from Vermont. Both of us were living in Vermont at the time, but my friend was actually moving out to Oregon. And instead of flying out there, he wanted to drive. I'll actually put a picture on screen. So we literally drove across the country in this big ass truck. We pulled his car and we pulled his dirt bike and a bunch of other shit, I think. So we drive all the way across the country. If you've ever done that, it's fucking sick. I mean, it's boring at times because you're literally just sitting there doing nothing. But at this time, my friend and I, you know, we like to smoke, so. We were getting high, just chilling, driving across the country. Even though that's illegal, I probably shouldn't have said that, but fuck it. Hey, it is what it is. So it took us like probably five, four or five days to drive all the way from Vermont to Oregon. And it was a sick little road trip. Everything's great. Um, and then I stayed there for a week. So I had time off from work, by the way. And so I'm out there for this whole week, right? And for some reason, just being away from home, it got me out of my routine that I was in. I had built up like a good solid foundation of, you know, holding in my nut, um, working out every day. Uh, I was still smoking, but at least I wasn't going on the hub. But being out of my natural environment, I was all the way across the country, and for some reason, I was taking a morning dump, and I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling on Instagram, because this was back before I deleted social media. If you know my story, you know that I deleted social media, but it was actually after I got home from Oregon. Now I'm scrolling on Instagram, and you know, I stumble across some things, you know, a booty there, some cleavage there. So I'm, I'm getting, you know, aroused. Let's put it that way. I'm getting aroused. So I'm on the hub, I relapse. Um, but the weird thing is I didn't nut. So it was like, I started edging. And then after a little bit of doing that, I realized what the F am I doing? So I closed the app, I closed Instagram. You know, I wiped my ass because I was literally taking a shit. Fucking weirdo. And yeah, cleaned my hands, you know, got out of the bathroom and everything was fine. You know what's funny is for the rest of that trip, I literally felt dirty. I was like, ugh, that was weird. Why did I do that? Because I had been away from the hub for 30 days. And then when you go back to it, it's almost like you do take a hit in progress where it's like, shit, now I feel a little more anxious talking to people. It's, I, it's hard to explain, but you probably understand. If you're watching this video, you probably understand, but... Anyway, I felt like a loser, all that, but I held in my seed. <laughs> so I was still, you know, high energy. But anyway, after my whole week long vacation with my friend, I fly home and again, all right, Matt, it's time to get serious, but this time I actually do. And for the next couple months, things were actually going so great in my life. Like I had a newfound sense of purpose. I was working out every single day. I was retaining, like, dude, I'm telling you, my social skills at work were improving. I was, I was able to talk to people with ease, just not feeling like, any anxiety at all and had a better relationship with my mother straight up my mom and I got along way better I was no longer like this irritable emotional feminine little bitch I started becoming more masculine I started taking responsibility for my life and like I said I had this newfound sense of purpose I ended up enrolling into a college that's like literally down the road from my house like two minutes and it's like this tiny ass little school 
and I decide I'm gonna study electrical engineering. And the reason I went to that school, not some big school, is because I didn't wanna live on campus anymore. I was tired of the whole college party scene. I had already experienced that a few years earlier, a couple years earlier, and I was on semen retention, man. I was trying to grind, stay on my shit. So I commuted to this school and decided, no, I'm not gonna get tempted into partying and bullshit. I'm just gonna stay focused, stay locked in. And it was a great decision because to be honest, living on campus, I would have fallen back into bad habits. <laughs> Definitely. Now we're into September of 2020, where I'm still working this job at FedEx. Uh, it has been since June since I released, but I had you know that slip up in Oregon where I was on the hub, so that was one slip up. Throughout August, I definitely went on the hub once or twice, but it was like I edged and then got off and was like, damn Matt, what am I doing? Fuck that, get off. If you watched my video, How to Quit Porn for Good, you know the story of how I was, you know, oh, just one little peek, right? I'll take one little peek. It was like, I broke my addiction to ejaculating before I broke my hub addiction, if that makes sense. And so now it's September, my first college class is about to start at this brand new school. And so, you know, I'm getting nervous. I'm like, damn, I'm about to start a new school year. This is kind of exciting, but at the same time, I'm nervous. And it was all online though, which helped because, you know, I didn't want to go to class anyway. But I knew I needed to like fucking make something of my life and not just waste it away. And so I remember sitting in my very first online class of the year. And by the way, I'm stoned. So I decided that it was a good idea to get high before this class because I'm not actually going to a school. I'm literally just sitting in my room. And I knew like, oh, it's just the first class. We're not gonna do anything meaningful. Like I don't have to pay attention. I'm sitting there, right? And the teacher asks us all to introduce ourselves. And so like, oh, I'm getting nervous. I gotta speak in front of these people. Like I'm stoned. What the hell am I gonna do? My eyes probably look red. They're gonna know I'm high. Paranoid. Cause by the way, at this point in my life, I knew that weed was holding me back. And I also got very paranoid every time I smoked it. It was like every time I got high, I would be overthinking like, oh, Matt, what are you doing, man? You know you shouldn't be doing this. Because like it, for the last couple of months, you know, I'm on NoFap, I'm retaining, I'm working out consistently. Like things were starting to get better. But I had this one fucking problem holding me back. And every time I did it, I'd be paranoid, overthinking, stressed, all that. And so I'm sitting in class. I'm about to tell people like, oh, my name's Matt, blah, blah, blah. And I fumble my words because I'm nervous. <laughs> and I get like, you know, bright red face like anyway I get through that part and now I'm sitting in class just like mad at myself like dude you really just let your first impression be that like come on man you'll notice a common theme with every time you relapse usually it's because you're feeling bad about yourself usually it's because you're feeling bad about your life you're feeling sad about something you're feeling stressed about something that's what happened to me I was feeling stressed and anxious over being in class I was kind of down on myself for smoking weed and I decided to go to the one outlet that I knew best, which was the hub. In the middle of class, I search it up. Obviously, there's no volume. Obviously, my dick is in my pants. I'm not touching it. I'm just looking and watching while in class. So my computer screen is in front of me, and I'm like looking down at my phone. <laughs> it's like the hub provides you this sense of comfort, this sense of security, but really it's robbing you of those things. So anyway, luckily the teacher didn't call on me. Luckily nobody found out, but that would have been bad. All right. That was my first fucking class and I'm already in class watching porn. Like dude, down bad moment, completely down bad moment. And that was like a turning point for me because it was like, wow, I am straight up addicted to this shit. It's been two months since I've watched it, but I still can't break it. I still go back to it. And this may happen to you on your journey, bro. It may. Keep going forward. Keep moving forward. And that's what I did. I kept going. I got right back on the horse. And so this time things were different. I decided enough is enough. I need to quit weed. And so I do. I throw my bong, my weed, my stash, my pipes, my lighters, I throw all of that shit into a dumpster and get rid of it. Out of sight, out of mind, that was my thinking. And it actually worked because at this point, one of my best friends who I, had sm who I was smoking with every single day, he went back to school down in Virginia, so in a whole nother state, I was alone. I was by myself, there was no excuse. I quit weed, the, one of the best decisions I've ever made. And so finally getting away from weed, being on NoFap, like, Everything in my life just kept getting better and better. I was building so much momentum, all right? And this time, without the weed, my mental clarity was so much better. I was so sharp. 
I was starting to make more gains in the gym because I, the weed was definitely holding back my gains. Yeah, just things were going great. Now we get into October and it's been four months since I released my seed, the longest I'd ever gone in my entire life. I never fucking thought it'd be possible that I could go four months without, <clears throat> but I did. And so, bro, I was experiencing all the semen retention benefits. Everything was, everything was looking up in my life. I had quit weed. I had pretty much quit porn, but you know, shit happens and shit did happen. Okay. It's Halloween night of 2020. So October 31st. And I remember it fell on the weekend. I want to say maybe, but anyway, that weekend, yeah, it had to have been because that weekend, maybe not, but whatever that weekend, I decided to binge watch the Star Wars trilogies, both of them. And so I get to, what is it? Episode six, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. I'm on episode six, Return of the Jedi. I'd watched like two, I watched the first two that same night. Looking back, it was like, why am I binge watching this movie? Like I got better shit to do. But anyway, great movies. So I'm on episode six, Return of the Jedi and Slave Leia, Princess Leia, wearing her slave outfit comes on screen. Immediately I'm going boing, like I immediately get an urge, immediately get that little tickle downstairs. Cause I hadn't seen any material. I hadn't seen any digital shit in a couple months up to that point. It, the last time I did was the beginning of September and now it's the end of October. The beginning of September was when I was in class. That was the last time I had seen any of it. So it had been two, almost two months. And I just couldn't fucking control myself. Slave Leia just caught me lacking, all right? And ended up thinking to myself, hmm, tomorrow is November. So you know what that means. Tomorrow is no nut November. So might as well just fuck up my streak today because I can just start again tomorrow on no nut November. That was what was going through my mind. But at the same time, there was an angel on my shoulder going, don't do it, Matt. You know better. Don't do it. But in the end, the devil won. And I went crazy on myself that night. I'm, I'm talking like probably busted three nuts the entire night and was fucking watching porn for like three hours. It was like just a marathon session. And that completely destroyed my spirit, my mojo, all that. I just felt down for the next like week because of it. I'm like, oh, why did I do that to myself? I'm never gonna cure my ED. I felt low energy because it had been four months since I released, but after releasing three times in one night, of course I experienced you know, a, dip, a dip in energy and more of like a lack of motivation. It was harder for me to get myself to go to the gym the next day because I was, you know, less disciplined. I was less motivated. And yeah, it sucked. It really sucked. I'm pissed at Princess Leia. Just kidding. I'm grateful for her. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, oh, next thing you know, it's right back on the horse. November 1st. And I did get right back on that horse. I'm telling you right now. Because that was the start of the next longest streak in my life, which lasted over 200 days. And we'll get to the end of that streak later on in this video. So I start on November 1st of 2020. No, not November. So yeah, obviously I passed because I didn't release for another 200 days after that point. But there's always hiccups. There's always problems. There's always something. It's the theme of this story. It's we're on a roller coaster ride right now. We're on a huge roller coaster ride. So we fast forward. November goes great. December goes great. I'm literally feeling the best I've ever felt in my entire life because this is the first streak where I was clean. No weed, no anything. Just me, myself, and I following a strict daily routine that I set for myself. It's so funny because my daily routine literally became a habit. My whole day became a habit. I knew exactly what I was gonna do at what time. I was working from 2 a.m. to about 9 or 10 a.m. Then I'd work out from like 9 or 10 a.m. to 11 or 12 p.m. and then all right, now it's just a cold shower, eat some food, do my homework, do my classes. Boom, now I maybe read a book and then I meditate. By the way, I got into meditation, huge part of my life, daily meditation. And then I just watch TV. I'd fuck around, you know, watch a movie or whatever. And my bedtime was like 6 or 7 p.m. because I had to wake up so early. So that was literally my day. It was so great. I was making so much progress. And then we get into the new year, January 2021. And I decided to book a vacation out to Oregon to see my friend who had helped move out the year before. And so I wanted to see him. I spent two weeks in Oregon. So I got two weeks off from work and this was during obviously um, school break. So I didn't have any classes at this time. And so I'm spending two weeks out there and 
I relapsed not only on porn, but also on weed. Okay, my friend and I, we, this is my college roommate, by the way, so we had, you know, done some degenerate shit together, and we decide to pick up smoking again. He had been off of weed too, but when we got together, it was like, yeah, you want to? Okay. <laughs> One of those moments. Um, so we did. And I tried not to let it get to me. I tried to think to myself, oh, I'm on vacation. Sure, this is fun. Like, I can just fuck around. But honestly, it hit me. I was overthinking. I was like, damn, why am I doing this? I know why I shouldn't be doing this. It's just messing with my mental health, messing with my physical health as well. But, you know, like I said, I tried to enjoy myself for this two week period. And I remember this one day in particular where my friend had to go to work for the day. And so he left me at home by myself. All his roommates were gone as well. So I was in this big house alone with a bong <laughs> and my thoughts. <laughs> so <laughs> you can imagine how that went. Um, I was just smoking weed all pretty much all day. And eventually I decided to go on the hub and watch porn. Luckily, I didn't release, okay, but I still relapsed on porn. And man, it's just, it's, an, it's another one of those things where it's just, it fucking sucks. It sucks to relapse because you've made so much progress and then you've, you don't throw it all away, but it feels like you throw it all away in the moment. It does. And I was like, why am I going back to this demonic, filthy, stinky shit? Why am, I, why am I so obsessed with seeing this shit? That's a question you gotta keep asking yourself as well. It's gross. It's nasty. Put it away. <laughs> and anyway, that was just kind of a, a memory of mine where it's like, I had been making so much progress for a couple months, but I fell back into it again. It's like, when is this shit gonna stop? When is it gonna end? When am I gonna finally quit the addiction? By the end of the trip, I was so ready to go home because I'm like, damn, I just need to go back to my daily routine, get back on my grind. But the problem was I went home and I was like, damn, I, I've been smoking weed for the last two weeks. Now what? I really wanted to smoke it. So I ended up getting a weed cartridge that you smoke out of like a pen, like a little dab pen. And for the next week, I'm just fucking chiefing on that thing every single day. Non-stop after it will after work and then I'd work out after the workout Then it was all right time to smoke time to rip my pen and for the whole week I binge watched how I met your mother. Maybe it was like two weeks the entire nine seasons literally Because I didn't have school. So after I worked out I was still on school break until the first of February and Yeah, I was just being a degenerate. I had already been on self and on self-improvement known about no fap, known about semen retention, and obviously I was on semen retention and on no fap, but I got back into the weed, back into just being a little slob, being a little slug, being a couch potato for for 2 weeks straight. Well, by that point it turned into a whole month because 2 weeks with my friend and then 2 weeks alone at home. <sighs> Once school started back up though, February 1st, I made a commitment to myself that I was I was done. No more smoking weed. No more porn, none of it. It's time to get back on my shit for good. And so February of 2021 was actually one of the turning points in my whole entire life because I don't really speak about this much. I've never, I don't think I've ever said anything about this on my channel, but during this month, I ended up having sort of like a, a spiritual awakening. You might be like, whoa, that's weird, man. What's that? Well, that sounds woo woo. Um, but really what I mean is that I essentially got closer to God. My whole entire life, I had never really gone to church. I wasn't raised religious at all. And I didn't think about God at all. But during this month, for some reason, and I definitely feel like it has something to do with semen retention, being on semen retention, holding in your life force energy. I ended up, because at that point it had been four months since Slave Leia like took my soul back in October. <laughs> So I fully believe that, you know, retaining for that long allowed me to have this spiritual awakening where I got closer to God and I finally, for the first time in my life, believed in him 
believed in a higher power. I had never thought about this until that moment in my life. And it was almost like, oh yeah, I do believe in a higher power. I do believe in a God. He is out there. And I can't tell you how much like the sense of relief I felt of like, wow, I don't have to worry. Everything is going to be okay. He is looking out for me. He loves me. So that was a very powerful moment in my life and a turning point for sure. Because from there, I got so serious about self-improvement. So serious. I was back on my daily routine, back in school, back working, just completely leveling up every single day. Reading every day, cold showers every day, meditating every day, working out every day. Completely transformed my physique, became strong, became ripped, and was just so happy in my life had that little spiritual awakening, just felt like everything was so good. I was at peace. I remember being at work, working this miserable job, by the way. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. Who wants to be at work at that time? And I had a smile on my face thinking, man, I'm out here making money while most of the world is asleep. I had a smile, just thinking that's so cool to think about. And also, life is beautiful. I'm in the present moment. Everything is gonna work out. I just remember just having these feelings of peace, these inner peace feelings. like. Like, full-on self-love. And I know for a fact, a big part of that was because of semen retention. Because of quitting the hub. I know for a fact. If you don't want to believe it, that's fine. You don't have to. But that's what I believe. So. <sighs> yeah. So I'm completely locked in. We're now into March of 2021. It had been a little more than a month since I quit weed for the second time. And, you know, I'm on retention, not watching any porn. So just feeling the happiest I've ever felt in my entire life. Literally, I felt so happy. My whole day was a habit, like I said. And God throws me a curveball. He sends me a girl who happens to be my current girlfriend. She started working at FedEx, the same facility that I worked at. And that is gonna be saved for another story time. Let me know in the comments, do you wanna hear the story of how we met and what happened when we met? Let me know. But anyway, I fully believe God sends me this girl. And at the time, I don't know if I believed that. But one thing I did believe was I like her. <laughs> so I like this girl a lot. And obviously, you know, I love her now because we're together. It's my future wife. And by the way, I wasn't even looking for a girl at this point. It wasn't like I was actively searching for something because I was so happy being alone. I was so happy with my daily routine that I didn't even have time for a girl. It was like, no, I'm on my shit. I'm gonna keep leveling up and then find someone after I keep leveling up. But that's the irony in it. The fact that I wasn't needy for one, the fact that I wasn't searching for one, that's why she came into my life. And so, you know, we're flirting and everything's going good. We, she really likes me as well because, you know, I'm like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, you know, we're, we have an instant connection, an instant spark. And I'm thinking, damn, if I want to get in her pants, um, I need to cure my ED or I hope it's cured. The only way to tell if it's cured is to actually try. So I'm kind of stressing like shit. <laughs> Like, is this gonna work? But that gave me way more motivation to stay away from the hub completely because I knew that I was eventually going to get intimate with this girl. So the motivation was there. I was like, I am not giving in to any of my urges. No fucking way. So I didn't. For the next you know month or so, we're flirting every day at work. We hang out a little bit here and there, but I was kind of waiting to be done with my school year to start hanging out with her fully because I was so damn busy. But you know, we hung out uh, one time me and her and her friend. So no, I didn't hook up with her because it was like a little triple thing. <laughs> but uh, then once I was done school in May, that is when we got intimate for the first time. Cause I now had time to have her over during the day or take her out to dinner, which I did first couple times, you know, we just made out so I didn't bust. But then, I mean, you can, you can imagine, all right, when the deed did happen, my dick was fine, everything is good, I was cured, my ED was gone. So if you're struggling with that same problem, dude, you just have to get away from the hub for an extended period of time and then there's nothing to worry about. I was worried, but I had nothing to worry about. So it worked, everything went fine, and I released. After 200 plus days of being on retention, I released. I had mixed feelings 
on the one hand, it was like, damn, I just had a beautiful moment with this beautiful girl who I love. This is awesome. It's not like I touched myself with my right hand. <laughs> but on the other hand, I was like, damn, my retention journey is over. What do I do now? I feel a little drained. I feel like my energy is a little lower, which it was. It takes like a couple of days. It takes probably a week to get your energy back for those curious. And so I was like, damn, there were mixed feelings for sure. But what was I gonna do? I was in a relationship now. Um, I was releasing quite often because it's like, yeah, we're intimate, we're having sex, we're doing it. And so for the next like four or five months, it was just constant like releasing. Not every day because we didn't hang out every single day, but eventually we did. And yeah, I was just releasing my nut a lot. And I won't even lie to you, I was still thinking about semen retention. I was still thinking like, because I had went 200 days. The benefits are real, bro. Like the energy I felt was amazing. Think about it, you're retaining your life force energy, the energy that has the power to make a baby. You're holding that in. It's nourishing your body. It's nourishing your brain. There are fucking smart ass people in this world who know about semen retention. Of course they do. Elon Musk, LeBron James, I'm pretty sure, did semen retention because he made this quote one time saying, oh, uh, my wife's not too happy about it. Talking about like what he's doing to prepare for the NBA finals, I think a couple years ago. Like people know about this shit, it works. Anyway, I'm releasing a lot. I'm thinking, fuck, I wanna get back on retention, but it's hard because I have a girlfriend, like what do I do? That, these are the thoughts I'm having, like how the fuck am I gonna make this work? Do I break up with her just so I can be on retention? Like no, that's, that's a silly goofy thing to do, obviously. So, uh, I actually remember rereading The Way of the Superior Man. And in the end of the book, he talks about semen retention. He talks about the fact that your ejaculation should be consciously chosen and not just like every time you do it. It shouldn't be just an every time thing. It should be you choose when you want to ejaculate. And because he says like your woman is literally weakening you when you ejaculate, which is true. I mean, it's true. Your woman has the power to weaken you when you bust with her every single time. And so I intuitively knew this, like deep down I knew like, yeah, okay, I know about this. Like I had done 200 days of semen retention. I know that I wanna be on it. So I started doing more research and I learned that, oh, your ejaculation can be consciously chosen even when you're having sex. Very spiritual practice. You can still have sex, but you don't nut. I'm very curious and I'm very interested in this. And to be honest, now we're into 2022. For the entire year of 2022, that is what I was practicing. I was basically practicing having sex without releasing. And if you're wondering like, damn Matt, that's weird. Why would you do that? To be honest, for me, the reason why I do it is because I like being on semen retention. I like having my life force energy in me all the time. Because I feel better. I'm less drained, I'm less tired, I'm less demotivated, if that's a word. Yeah, it is. I'm more disciplined, I'm sharper. I live life with more oomph, <clears throat> if you know what I mean. If you don't agree with it, that's fine. If you think, no, when I have sex, I'm gonna bust every time, fine. That's fine, I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just telling you my story, my experience, and the reason why I do it. You also may be like, well, Matt, how does she get any pleasure from that? Think about it, dude. If you're not releasing, that means you can have sex for longer. Like, I can have sex longer than I could before because I'm not releasing, so. Yeah, I can't really get into it on YouTube in much detail, but let me tell you right now, my girlfriend is more than satisfied, okay? It's not a problem. You can still have sex good. And by the way, sex isn't just about ejaculation. It's not about just this little spasm that you have at the end. It's about connecting with someone, exchanging energy, sexual energy exchange. You're connecting with that person on a deep, emotional, physical, spiritual level. But let's not even go there. Let's just keep moving on with the video. So 2022, that was me practicing that. And by the end of 2022, I got pretty good at it where I was like, oh damn, now I can actually be on semen retention and have sex and be in a relationship. So it was the best of both worlds. It was a win-win. So, all right, so my camera just died, but we're back. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, so having sex without releasing, Doing that for the for the remainder of 2022, I got pretty good at it. Um, so I'm doing, you know, 
maybe like a couple weeks at a time of being on retention and then failing and thinking to myself, fuck, this isn't enough. I want to go on longer streaks. So I keep trying and keep practicing and keep practicing. And if you're curious on like how to do it, I made like a full guide, how to be on semen retention in a relationship. You can go watch that after this video. I can't really explain everything because it is YouTube and they will come after my channel if I do that. So I do explain a little bit, but fuck, I wish I could go fully into details. Maybe one day. Go watch that after this if you're curious. Now let's speak about the hub, okay? Cause 2022, not gonna lie, I did not break free from it yet. There were a couple moments and I'm ashamed to admit this because I had a girlfriend, but there were a couple moments where I found myself back on the hub. Now, I am proud of myself though because I did not watch any full videos. I did not sit there and look at it for very long. No, I had the self-control and awareness at this point in my life to immediately close out of the browser. And that's when I knew I was making progress. I knew that I was making progress because I would just immediately see it and think, that's disgusting. Oh, why am I looking at that? But it happened a couple times. All right, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm gonna be straight up. It happened a couple times where I found myself back there like a freaking idiot. At the same time, I was on Reddit a few times and saw some, you know, juicy nipples on, <laughs> on Reddit a couple times. Cause I mean, all these apps, they're all so sexualized now that you can't escape it. Literally, you can't fucking escape it. And so at that point, I'm like, why don't I even have Reddit? It's stupid, just deleted it. And it wasn't even like I had it all the time. I would like re-download it sometimes and think, hmm, maybe I'll just scroll on it just in case I find something that I wanna look at. Like, weird shit, weird shit. So 2022 was almost a hub-free year, but not quite. Now let's move to 2023. And I started 2023 out horribly in terms of retention because I remember just like completely just going crazy a few, like probably 10 times in the first month, 10 times in January, I'm just like releasing my seed, even though I want to be better. I want to be on retention and with my girlfriend, by the way, not with my right hand. So fast forward to February. And that is when I started this channel. Since starting this channel, I have only released one time. So I've gotten very good. I will say at having sex without releasing. One time since February of 2023. It is now 2024. So I'm proud of myself. I'm very proud of myself because I'm able to be on retention and be in a relationship. It feels good. Obviously, I slipped up once, but that's going to happen. You know, you can't always win. You can't always control what happens. Sometimes you take it too far. You go past that point and no return. It's inevitable. But the good thing is I'm not relapsing on NoFap and watching porn and being a freaking little monkey. No. I'm connecting with the girl that I love. I still call it a relapse because my standards are higher now where I want to be in retention, but hey, to each their own. Now, throughout this entire year, getting back to the porn side of things, it was a porn-free year in terms of the hub. Since I started this channel, I have not gone on the hub at all. It Honestly, it helps because I literally have accountability from you. If you think about it, I have 40,000 accountability buddies. <laughs> like, If I were to relapse on porn, you best believe I'm coming to this camera and telling you I fucked up. You best believe. I wanna share like all my fuck ups with you on camera because I'm not perfect. I'm a self-improvement YouTuber, but that doesn't mean I'm perfect. You shouldn't look up to me like I'm some God, okay? Cause I'm fucking not. I'm just a normal dude sharing my life, sharing my wisdom, sharing my story in hopes of helping you. And so far I've helped a lot of people. I have a lot of young men and it's beautiful, but don't ever think that I'm perfect. Don't ever think that any of these self-improvement YouTubers are perfect. We all fuck up. We're all human. We all make mistakes. So if you fuck up on your journey, it is what it is. It's okay. Because we're not perfect either. I'm not. Anyway, all of 2023 was porn free. I finally broke free from that addiction. Finally. But as you just heard, it took me two years, two and a half years to finally beat it for good. And you never know, I could slip up in the future, but I have no intent on doing that, of course. I will say during this year, I saw, uh, there were three instances where I saw a naked nipple on screen, all right? First instance, I saw the movie Oppenheimer and there was a sex scene and I saw a girl's nipple. Second instance was, I saw, oh, it was this uh, Jennifer Lawrence movie. Um, what's it called? 
No Hard Feelings. And I was watching that with my girlfriend and she was naked in one of the scenes. So, all right, boom. These don't count as relapses, by the way, but like, it's just funny because you can't escape it. No matter what you do, you can't escape it. You just literally have to not watch any movies or R-rated movies at least. <sighs> yeah. And then, oh, the third instance was I'm in a group chat with a bunch of friends. We all play like fantasy football together and a video got sent into this chat where my friend was at a gym and he was filming this video and all of a sudden he zooms in like across the road in this big ass building and you can literally see two people having sex like they're like against the window and so that was horrifying because i guess that counts as a relapse but not actually but it's like why the fuck am i getting sent this shit so i literally couldn't escape those moments that just it is what it is i could have closed my eyes but you know once you see it it's like uh okay now i should close my eyes but our world is so sexualized. It's actually crazy. It's not normal. It is not. Think back to the caveman days. They were not watching any of this shit. They did not see any of that. The woman they were intimate with, of course they see her naked, but that's it. That's what's normal. Through the screen is not normal. It's fucking with your mental health. And you already know this. Anyway, 2023, beautiful year. We're on to 2024 now. Let this be the year that you either start your journey, either get serious on your journey, or completely dominate your journey. Whichever one it's gonna be, that's up to you. With that said, I genuinely hope this video helped. If you made it this far, you're a real one. OG of the brotherhood right there. My brother, much love. Like I said, I hope my stories helped. Uh, I hope this motivated you, inspired you. All the above. If you made it this far, leave a like. Let's uh, push this out to other people who could benefit from this video and comment below your thoughts. With that said, I will see you in the next video. Peace.